This is Richard Hammock's Calculus 1 course. Our previous lecture, Lecture 5a, reviewed exponential functions. Today in Lecture 5b, we talk about a closely related topic, logarithms. Logarithms are inverses of exponential functions. So today's plan is to review inverses of exponential functions, define logarithms, talk about properties of logarithms, and we'll discuss a special logarithm called the common logarithm. Let's begin with inverses of exponential functions. And as a point of departure, take the exponential function 2 to the power of x. This function is 1 to 1. Any horizontal line will cross at, at most one point. And because 2 to the x is 1 to 1, it has an inverse. And that inverse is going to be the opposite operation of 2 to the power of x. 2 to the power of x takes as input an x value and sends it to the number y, which is 2 to the power of x. F inverse is going to work exactly the opposite of that. As input, it'll take an x and send it backwards to the number y, for which 2 to the power of y equals x. In words, f inverse of x is the number y for which 2 to the power of y equals x. Allow me to change the notation for f inverse very slightly in a way that's going to emphasize its meaning. Rather than calling this function f inverse, of x. Let me call it 2 box of x. So I'm replacing the expression f inverse, the name of the function, with the expression 2 box, which is another name for the same function. And 2 box of x is exactly what is stated here. 2 box of x is the number y that goes in the box for which 2 to the power of y equals x. 2 box of x is what goes in the box so that 2 to that power equals x. So for instance, let's think about f inverse of 8, which we could also write as 2 box of 8. What is 2 box of 8? It's the number that goes in the box so that 2 to that power equals 8. Well, 2 to the power of 3 equals 8, so 2 box of 8 is 3. f inverse of 8 is 3. And you can see that here, running f in reverse from 8, we go down to 3. 3 is the number for which 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. Let's look at f inverse of 4. That would be 2 box of 4. It's the number that goes in the box so that 2 to that power equals 4. Well, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, so 2 box of 4 would be 2. So we're saying f inverse of 4 equals 2. And you can see up here on the graph that if you run f backwards to do f inverse of 4, it takes you to 2. 2 is the number such that 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. F inverse of 2 would be 2 box of 2. What number goes in the box so that 2 to that power equals 2? 1 goes in the box. 2 to the power of 1 equals 2. So 2 box of 2 equals 1. Run F backwards on 2, and it takes you to 1. 1 is the power. You have to raise 2, 2 to get 2. 2 box of 2 equals 1. F inverse of 1 would be 2 box of 1. What goes in the box so the 2 to that power equals 1? Well, 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. So 2 box of 1 equals 0. How about F inverse of 1 half? That would be 2 box of 1 half. 
It's the number that goes in the box so that two to that power equals one half. Well, what number goes in the box? Two to the power of one, negative one equals one half. So two box of one half equals minus one. And you see it here, running f backwards on one half brings you to minus one. Two to the power of minus one equals one half. F inverse of square root of two would be two box of the square root of two. Now in these problems, it's helpful to think about the input as being a power of two and the square root of two is two to the power of one half. So two box of two to the one half would be what goes in the box so that two to that power equals two to the power of one half. Well, clearly one half would have to go in the box. Two to the power of one half equals two to the power of one half. So f inverse of the square root of two equals one half. Now, square root of two is about 1.41. You can see running f backwards gets you down to one half for an output of f inverse. These aren't always so easy. Think of f inverse of three, which we're writing as two box of three. It's the number that goes in the box, so the two to that power equals three. Well, let's see, two to the power of one would be two, and two to the power of four would be that's already at four. So the number that goes in the box looks like it has to be between one and two, but it's hard to think of a power of two that equals three. Running f backwards sends three down to some number between one and two, but exactly what number that is is hard to figure out because three is not a familiar and natural power of two. So we'll just have to say question mark for now. But the point is we have a conceptual way of understanding the inverse of the exponential function two to the power of x, a way of thinking about it that's very productive. Now let's think about what the graph of this inverse would look like. We know to get the inverse of two to the power of x, we reflect the graph across the line y equals x. And doing so gives you a graph that looks something like this. So that's the graph of f inverse. Now, the way this works is that in reality, in your textbooks, this function will be called neither f inverse nor will it be called two box. There's a special name for this special function, the inverse of two to the power of x. It's called log base two of x. Log base two is just the name of a function. It's the name of the inverse of two to the x. Two box is another name for log base two. So the way this is gonna work is that from here on out, the inverse of an exponential function like two to the power of x is gonna be called log base two of x. So sometimes, especially when you're first learning logarithms or if you're refreshing your memory, it's very helpful to switch over and instead of calling it log base two, call it two box. And sometimes it's easier to think about what that function means. But log base two means exactly the same thing as two box. Now, of course, what we've done here for the function f of x equals two to the power of x works just as well for other exponential functions to other bases. Let's switch the base now to base three. So here is the graph of f of x equals three to the power of x, and its inverse would be a function which is called log base three of x, and it's the number y for which three to the power of y equals x, which we're gonna call three box of x. So let's work out some function values for this 
f inverse of x, this log base 3, this 3 box function. Log base 3 of 27 is 3 box of 27. It's the number that goes in the box, such that 3 to that power equals 27. Well, 3 to the power of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. So 3 is what goes in the box. 3 box of 27 equals 3. Log base 3 of 27 equals 3. What about log base 3 of 9? That's 3 box of 9. What number goes in the box? So 3 to that power equals 9? 2. Log base 3 of 3 would be 3 box of 3. What number goes in the box? So that 3 to that power equals 3. Well, clearly, 3 to the power of 1 equals 3. So our answer is 1. 3 box of 3 equals 1. Log base 3 equals 1. And you can see here that if you plug in 3 to log base 3, sure enough, you get 1. What about log base 3 of 1? That's 3 box of 1. What number goes in the box? So that 3 to that power equals 1. Well, 3 to the power of 0 equals 1. So 3 box of 1 equals 0. Log base 3 of 1 equals 0. And you can see here that if you plug in 1 to log base 3, you're already at a y value of 0. That's the x-intercept of the log base 3 function. Log base 3 of 1 9th would be 3 box of 1 9. Well, 3 to the power of minus 1 equals 1 9th. I'm sorry, 3 to the power of minus 2 equals 1 9th. 3 to the power of minus 1 would be 1 third. That's not 1 9th. But put in a minus 2 to the box, 3 to the power of negative 2 equals 1 over 3 squared. That's 1 9th. So 3 box of 1 9th equals minus 2. Now 1 9th would be somewhere over here. 3 box of that is down, down by minus 2. Let's look at the log base 3 of the fifth root of 3. That would be 3 box of the fifth root of 3, which is 3 box of 3 to the power of 1 fifth. So what number goes in the box so that 3 to that power equals 3 to the 1 fifth? Well, of course, 1 fifth goes in the box. So log base 3 of the fifth root of 3 is 1 fifth. How about log base 3 of 2? Well, 2 is just not a convenient power of 3. This one's kind of hard to reason out. Um, so that would be 3 box of 2. It's hard to think about what would go in the box so that 3 to that power equals 2. Clearly, it'd be a, 3 squared is... Uh, 3 to the power of 1 is 3. So you'd think what needs to go in the box would be a shade under 1. Um, but it's hard to say. So we'll just say question mark for now. And we, we'll revisit issues like this a little bit later in the next lecture. But the important thing is log base 3 of x is the inverse of 3 to the power of x. And we have a way of thinking about that inverse. So from these examples, let's make a definition. Let a be greater than 0 and not equal to 1. Then the logarithm to base a is the function log base a of x, which is also named a box of x. And in words, it's the number y for which a to the power of y equals x. The number that goes in the box so that a to that power equals x. That's log base a of x. And as indicated in the previous slide, the function log base a is the inverse of the exponential function a to the power of x. So the picture would look this way, given an exponential function a to the power of x, 
its inverse is called log base a of x, or a box of x. So for instance, what if we had a log base 5 of 25? That's 5 box of 25. Well, 5 squared is 25, so 2 goes in the box, so that 5 to that power is 25. So this is 2. Log base 5 of 25 is 2. What about log base 5 of 0 0.2? Well, 0 0.2 is 1 fifth, so we have log base 5 of 1 fifth. That's 5 box of 1 fifth. Well, 5 to the power of minus 1 is 1 fifth, so this equals negative 1. Log base 10 of 10, 000, uh, of 1,000 would be 10 box of 1,000. Well, 10 cubed equals 1,000, so 10 box of 1,000 is 3. Log base 10 of 1,000 is 3. Log base 8 of 2 would be 8 box of 2. So 8 to what power equals 2? Well, the cube root of 8 equals 2. That would be 8 to the power of 1 third. So 8 box of 2 is 1 third. Log base 8 of 2 equals 1 third. So logarithms should be pretty easy to think about, especially when you convert them to the a box notation. Log base a of x is a box of x. Let's collect some properties of logarithms. First of all, the domain of a logarithm function is going to be the range of the exponential function, a to the power of x. It's all of the positive numbers. So the domain of log base a is the interval from 0 to infinity. Now the range is the possible set of output values that you could get when you plug, them, plug values into log base a. And that's, remember, the domain of the function f of x equals a to the power of x, which is all real numbers. So range is all real numbers. Also, think about log base a of 1. That's a box of 1. What number goes in the box so that a to that power equals 1? 0. a to the power of 0 equals 1. So log base a of 1 is always equal to 0. That's a fundamental property of log base a. What about log base a of a? That's a box of a. What number goes in the box so that a to the power of that number equals a? Well, a to the power of 1 equals a. So log base a of a equals 1. And that's another fundamental property of log base A. For another property, consider log base A of A to the power of X. That would be A box of A to the power of X. So what goes in the box? So A to that power equals A to the power of X. Well, of course, X goes in the box. So we have log base A of A to the power of X always equals x. That's yet another fundamental property of log base a. And really, this property is just an algebraic way of saying that log base a is the inverse of a to the power of x. It's like saying f inverse of f of x equals x. That's all it's saying. How about a to the power of log base a of x. That would be a to the power of, let's see, another name for log base a of x would be a box of x. So we have a raised to the power of a box of x. And what is a box of x? It's the power you have to raise a to to get x. And so here we are raising a to the power we have to raise it to to get x. So we get x. So always a to the power of log base a of x equals x. 
And really, that's just an algebraic statement of the fact that f of f inverse of x equals x. So what I want to do is take these four properties here, log base a of 1 equals 0, log base a of a equals 1, log base a of a to the x equals x, and a to the power of log base a of x equals x, those four properties, and let's collect them in a box here, and we're going to call these logarithm laws. And on this slide, we'll come up with some additional logarithm laws. But we'll begin by, with, by listing these four very fundamental logarithm laws. Now, another logarithm law tells you what log base a of x times y is. And we're going to work this out down at the bottom, and then we're going to put, it, put the answer up here in a box and list that as one of our fundamental logarithm laws. But very often, you'll have an expression that looks like log base a of x times y. And that simplifies to something significant. And let's figure it out. Log base a of x times y would be a box of x, y, because a box is just another name for log base a. Now the x right here and the y right there, we're going to write them in a special way. The x, remember, is equal to a to the power of log base a of x. x equals a to the power of log base a of x. So we're replacing this x with what it's equal to, a to the power of log base a of x, and this y here is also a to the power of log base a of y. So we have a box of a to the power of log base a of x times a to the power of log base a of y. But notice here you have this common base of a, and you know that when you multiply a to one power times a to another power, those powers add. So we would get a to the power of log base a of x plus log base a of y when we simplify or consolidate this product right here. So look at what we have. A box of a to the power of log base a of x plus log base a of y. This would equal the number that goes in the box. So a to that power equals a raised to the power of log base a of x plus log base a of y. Well, the quantity that goes in this box would have to be this power here, log base a of x plus log base a of y. That's the power you have to raise a to, so a equals that power. So the answer here is log base a of x plus log base a of y. So this fact that log base a of xy equals log base a of x plus log base a of y is a fundamental property that we're going to list here. And you'll use this property many times. Another fundamental property that I'm not going to derive here, but you can derive it yourself if you're so inclined, and it, the derivation is exactly almost word for word what we did here, it turns out that log base a of x divided by y is log base a of x minus log base a of y. And I, again, again, I invite you to replicate what we did here, making the corresponding modifications with that negative and the divides. And you will find that log base a of x over y equals log base a of x minus log base a of y. That's our sixth fundamental property of logarithms. Now, if we take that sixth property and replace the x with a 1, notice that log base a of 1 over y would be log base a of 1 minus log base a of y. But recall that log base a of 1 is 0. Um, so all we get is minus log base a of y. 
This is our seventh property, log base a of 1 over y is minus log base a of y. There's one additional property, an eighth property, that I want to list here. And really, it's this eighth property that's um, probably going to be the most useful for us. And it's going to tell us what log base a of x to the power of y is. And I'm going to work this out down here, and then we'll record it in the box. Log base a of x to the power of y would be, of course, a box of x to the power of y. And this x that's right here, that's being raised to the power of y, let's write x as what it equals to from this equation. x is equal to a to the power of log base a of x. So this x right here we replace with a to the power of log base a of x. So we have a box of a to the log base a of x, whole thing to the power of y. Now remember how exponents of exponents work. We have a to some power raised to the power of y. That y is going to multiply times the power of a. So we get a box of a to the power of y times log base a of x. The y here multiplied times that exponent. Now looking at this, a box of a to the power of y log base a of x, what number goes in the box? So a to that power equals a raised to the power of y log base a of x. Well clearly, this power itself, y log base a of x, would go in the box. So our answer here is y log base a of x. So we've just concluded that log base a of x to the y equals y times log base a of x. And we'll put that right here. So there we have it, eight fundamental properties of the logarithm function log base a. You should get lots of practice using these laws. We'll work a couple of examples now. Many times in solving problems you'll have to combine several logarithms into a single logarithm and this first example illustrates that. We want to write as a single logarithm 3 log base 2 of x plus a half log base 2 of y minus log base 2 of z. Now, the 3 log base 2 of x fits the pattern of y times log base a of x. And this rule here says that that can be replaced with log base 2 of x to the power of 3. The 3 can, in essence, come up and turn into an exponent of the x. And for the same reason, by the same law, the 1 half can turn into an exponent of the y. So combining that, we get log base 2 of x cubed plus log base 2 of y to the 1 half minus log base 2 of z. Now the y to the 1 half is the square root of y, so let's replace that. Now if you look at these first two terms, we have the sum of two logarithms to base 2. And we have a rule here that says the sum of two logarithms to a common base is the log to that base of the product of the arguments of those logarithms. So by that rule, the sum of these two first logarithms should be equal to log base 2 x cubed times the square root of y. And then we have the minus log base 2z just coming along for the ride. Now we have the difference of two logarithms, but we have a law that tells us what the difference of two logarithms is. Log base a of x minus log base a of y is log base a of x over y. In this instance, we would get log base 2 of x cubed square root of y divided by z. So we've now successfully combined these three logarithms into a single logarithm. 
Also, you occasionally need to, instead of combining logarithms, break them up into simpler pieces. Consider log base 3, 9 squared of xy. We'd like to break that into simpler pieces. Break it up into simpler logs. Now, that square root of xy, let's write that as xy to the 1 half. And we're doing this because we know there are lots of logarithm properties involving powers. Um, so it's convenient sometimes to write radicals as powers. Now we have log base 3 of 9 times this other thing, xy to the 1 half. And we could use this property that says log base a of a product of two things is the sum of log base a of those two things individually. Applied here, that would give us log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of xy to the 1 half. Now the 1 half can come down in front of the log base 3 by this law. We get log base 3 of 9 plus 1 half log base 3 of xy. Now log base 3 of 9, that's 3 box of 9, that's equal to 2. You can do that in your head. So we get 2 plus, and then the log base 3 of x times y, that's going to be, according to this rule, log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of y, and then we distribute that 1 half into that sum. So we get 2 plus a half log base 3 of x plus a half log base 3 of y. So we've now broken this one single logarithm up into separate pieces. These two examples are a little bit artificial. Really, we're just doing exercises and flexing our muscles, getting used to these properties. But you should know that when you're solving problems, applying these laws and calculus is a very natural process. And it's good to get used to it now, before you start doing calculus. Our final topic today is on what is called the common logarithm. It's a very special logarithm to a special base. It's log base 10. The logarithm to base 10 is called the common logarithm. So log base 10 of x, or in other words, 10 box of x is what we call the common logarithm. And it's so common, and so it comes up so frequently, that it's given a special notation. It's just called log, log of x, with no subscript. Every time you see log of x, you know that what is really meant is log base 10. It's the inverse of 10 to the power of x, which is graphed here. It's a rather steep exponential function. When you plug in 1, you get 10 to the power of 1. You're way up there at 10. Reflect that across the line y equals x, and you get y equals log base 10 of x, y equals log of x, the common logarithm. So this is its graph. Let's work a few examples. Log of 10 would be log base 10 of 10, or 10 box of 10, and 10 box of 10 equals 1. So log of 10 is 1. What about log of 100? That would be 10 box of 100, which is 2. Log of 0 0.1 would be log of 1 tenth. So it's 10 box of 1 tenth. So what goes in the box? So 10 to that power equals 1 tenth. Well, minus 1. So here we are. We're computing some common logs of various numbers. Of course, you can only do this in your head when the number you're plugging into your log is a recognizable power of 10. If you tried to work out log of 11, the common log of 11, which is log base 10 of 11, it's something you can't do in your head. That's 10 box of 11. So you're trying to think, what do I have to put in the box? What do I have to raise 10 to to get 11? 
and 11 is just not a recognizable power of 2. So you're stuck here. You get the feeling that 10 box of 11, it's got to be just a shade over 1, because 10 to the 1 would be 10. You'd have to increase that just a little, so 10 to that power was 11. So it's going to be 1 point something. But we can't say exactly. However, if you have available to you a scientific calculator, you will be able to find on it somewhere, and it's right here on this one, a log button. And that's the, whenever you see just log, plain log, you know that's the common logarithm. So you could punch in 11 and hit log, and you'll get the answer. And indeed, it is a shade over 1. It's 1.041, approximately. So with a good calculator, you can calculate common logarithms. So that's it for today. We've reviewed logarithms, which are inverses of exponential functions. We've talked about their properties. We've talked about the common logarithm, log base 10. You might wonder if 10 is the be-all and end-all of bases, is there a better base than 10? It looks pretty good because your calculator has a button for log base 10, and we have a base 10 number system. But actually, in calculus, there is one particular base that's considered better than 10, a logarithm that's better than the common log. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. It is called the natural log function. We'll talk about logarithms to a very specific and important base. And if you haven't seen it before, it's kind of surprising the way it works out. So we'll do that next time in Lecture 5C. So get some practice with this, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.